All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining this evening. I'm Catherine Nahorski, the Executive Director of the St. Louis Artists Guild. And uh, if I disappear, Zach will take over. Sometimes my home internet can be a little unstable. And we had a gallery talk last night too with one of our artists and his his poor internet <laughs> um, was like, I don't wanna do this. So uh, uh, welcome and thank you. And it's wonderful when technology works and then sometimes when it doesn't work, when you're really counting on it, then it's just a problem. Uh, the Young Artist Showcase is one of the longest running exhibits of, of the St. Louis Artist Guild. One of our longtime members, Cynthia Berg, who's in her 80s, when she was in high school in her 50s and 1950s, she wasn't in high school when she was 50, uh, when she was in high school in the 1950s, she participated in Young Artist Showcase. So what a history and what a tradition that the St. Louis Artist Guild brings to St. Louis and to our young artists and encouraging the artwork and also, also honoring the instructors. Um, you know, kudos to everybody making it through this last year uh, because it was last March when this all started and Young Art Artist, Artist Showcase was in our gallery. And, um, you know, we were getting ready to have a opening reception that did not happen because of the pandemic and the city closing down. So hopefully next year, we will all get together again because it was, you know, Young Artist Showcase is just a blast and the exhibit is wonderful. And when the adults come in, when they're coming to classes and to visit, they're always so surprised that the work is made by high school students. So you know, bravo to you for doing such, such exceptional work. Really a great job. And I have to thank Emerson right off the bat because they have sponsored our exhibit for years. And, you know, we just, it just is such a huge help. And especially during this time when funding is scarce and everybody needs help. So thank you very much, Emerson. So Rachel, the other thing that's I think really hard about Young Artist Showcase is during the work and selecting the work because we receive a lot of outstanding work. And Rachel had, I know her, her work cut out for her. And Rachel, I wanna make sure, you, do you pronounce your last name Yan? It's Yoon. Yoon, Interesting. Right. all right. I, you know, I thought I'm gonna try Yan, but <laughs> Yoon, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rachel is uh, an artist, and if anyone had a chance to see the exhibit that recently closed at the Contemporary Art Museum of uh, Biennial Winners, uh, Rachel's work was just um, as much fun as it can be, though there's lots of other meaning to it. And if you have a chance, please look up her work uh, because you too will become a fan and a follower. Uh, Rachel lives in St. Louis and she uses sculpture and media to poke fun at hierarchical narratives embedded in objects and lifestyles. Sourcing from home furnishing stores and oriental goods peddled on Craig's, Craigslist. Rachel's work collapses notions of authenticity and artifice through the lens of identity. Rachel received her BFA from Washington University in St. Louis and has exhibited at the Sheldon, Parapet Real Humans, the Militzer Gallery, the Luminary, Floodplain in St. Louis, the Bermuda Project in Ferguson, Open House Kansas City, and as I just mentioned, the Regional Arts Commission, oh, no, that was Cam. She was a recipient of the Regional Arts Commission Artist Support Grant in the Vermont Studio Center Fellowship. Plus, she is the admission counselors at Washington University. So she's gonna talk a little bit about all of that for us this evening. Please welcome Rachel. Hi, everybody, good evening. Um, I hope everybody is, is safe and well and been enjoying the beautiful weather in St. Louis. Um, so 
As Catherine introduced me, I'm Rachel Yoon. I'm the admissions counselor for the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts at Washington University in St. Louis, where I'm also an alum. Um, so my job in particular is to work with high school students who are interested in our art and architecture programs, which is kind of even more of a specific process than normally applying to colleges. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to everybody who uh, was included uh, in this uh, this year's Young Artist Showcase. It was such a pleasure to, to jury the work. And this was my first time jurying any sort, short, sort of show. And it was like really, really difficult. And I really kind of admire the work from everybody that was submitted. So um, I hope you're all like, you know, really proud of yourselves and your accomplishments. Um, and yeah, it was, it was great getting to review your work. So. Um, so yeah, I, today I wanted to just take a little bit of time to kind of talk about what that college admissions process looks like um, and also kind of talk about the portfolio section, because I think for anybody right now who's considering maybe an art program or going to a school that has an art program, um, this is something that you'll be kind of working on in the next year um, and assuming you know a lot of students here are juniors or sophomores or even freshmen. Um, I think even kind of getting into the mindset of college is a little bit daunting, you know, for sure. But um, but I think the kind of the earlier you, you uh, earlier on you kind of face things and, and everything you have to do, um, the easier it'll be kind of in the end before everything is due. So um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and switch to um, a presentation. Um, and if anybody has questions along the way, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, this is by no means like a super comprehensive presentation. Um, and I do want to hear, I'll do like Q&A at the end, because I also want to hear from you all, um, you know, what you want to know about this process. So, um, so yeah, with that being said, I'm going to switch to screen sharing. And Yeah, there we go. Can everybody see that? Okay, yes. perfect. Awesome. Um, so this is the first time I've given a presentation just about portfolios in general. Like for my job, obviously I, I talk about the Sam Fox School and Wash U, but um, I actually kind of was doing research and sourcing this presentation, you know, based on my experience as an admissions professional and working with like hundreds and hundreds of art students, but also as, coming from my own experience, like being in high school, um, you know, years ago, but um, being kind of clueless to the process and, and having fortunately the help of art teachers um, and also um, admissions professionals to help me through that process. Um, and I also did, I chat a little bit with friends um, who work in admissions at other art schools too, because I kind of wanted to incorporate their perspectives on everything as well. Um, I will say that when I was making this presentation, I found that it was really difficult to give specific advice on portfolio building in general, because every school is really different. Um, and I think an important part about building a portfolio and you know where you are now as kind of younger students is you have this chance to do your research and kind of prepare yourself um, to think about what you should focus on um, art making wise over the next you know, year or several years. Um, I think a, a big question, there's a lot of questions you should be asking yourself along this process. And one of those is like, what kind of program am I applying to in the first place? Um, schools can really differ. Um, there's universities that have, that have art programs like WashU. There are dedicated art colleges like Kansas City Art Institute or School of the Art in Chicago and or School of the Art Institute in Chicago. Um, and each one's going to have a little bit something different that they're looking for, just kind of based on, on their program structure. Um, and so I, I kind of was, I, I went through some different art school websites and was screenshotting just um, different program lists and you know, this is one from School of the Art Institute in Chicago. They have lots of different majors. Um, and um, something you want to know is whether you're applying straight into a major and whether you should tailor your portfolio to that program. Or, you know, in the case of Sam Fox, like you're applying just to the College of Arts. So it doesn't need to be, you know, a design portfolio or a studio art portfolio or fashion. It could just be an art portfolio. Um, 
And I think kind of knowing what your battle is coming up is going to help you kind of structure your time a little bit more easily. Um, I do want to mention that there's not like a perfect formula for a portfolio. I've seen incredibly successful portfolios that are like all one media. Like for example, this student um, was prime, just working digitally. He's obviously going to be a graphic designer um, and that's the work that he's been doing. And also the, the work that he has access to making. I think his school um, has like a really great graphic design program and that's why he can really focus on that. Um, some students have really kind of visually thematic uh, portfolios too. And they're kind of, they have like a vibe or um, I hesitate to say a style, but just like kind of a, an aesthetic that they're working with and they're continuing to pursue. Other students I've seen have submit work that's like all over the place. Like they'll include fashion work or installations or drawing and painting, photography, all in the same portfolio. And, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, it's all about kind of, you're tailoring your portfolio for each institution. You're giving just like a sample of your work um, to each school. That being said, you're not submitting everything you've ever made since like the fifth grade. Um, it's important to be really selective and curating your work. Even just the way that when you're working with your teachers to submit your work for this show, um, your teacher didn't submit everything that you've made. They, they kind of went through and curated the strongest works. Um, so you're gonna kind of do that process, I would say later on when you're getting, you know, a couple months closer to the deadline. Um, but right now, just focus on generating the work. If you love just doing one thing, like if you are a dedicated photographer and that's all you want to do, take lots of photos and do that. If you love to explore and you love comics and you love um, photography or sculpture um, and you wanna to continue to pursue all those equally, by all means do that. Because what a college wants to see is who you are as a person and not um, you know, just what they're looking for necessarily. Um, I do wanna stress that it's the internet is your friend. Um, and it's important to look up what is absolutely required in a portfolio. Um, and I, I would suggest even, you know, this sounds a little boring and stuffy, but even to like make a spreadsheet or like a chart on like, you know, a big piece of paper or something and just kind of list out exactly what some schools are looking for. Um, you'll find as you do research that sometimes portfolio requirements are very general and loose. Um, these are two different ones from schools that are asking for a range, they're like, okay, 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 images, showcase your interests, skills, and creative potential. Um, and they're just saying like, basically you can submit anything, right? As long as it's visual media. I would note that with these portfolios, you're not submitting like music or dance or writing samples. It's gonna be all visual um, media. On the other hand, some schools have incredibly specific requirements. And this is like where you're really want, going to want to take notes. Um, this is actually a list of majors from Art Center in Los Angeles. Um, and I, I brought this up because I've, I've always talked to my, my friend who works there and she's uh, always talking about how students like just aren't reading the, the fine text. Um, I, exp I wanted to show just even the difference between graphic design and illustration, like two programs that are kind of similar um, in general in the world, but at the school are different departments and are looking for different things. For graphic design, they want layouts, they want posters, brochures. For illustration, they're specifically asking for figure drawings. Um, so it's important again, to make note of those, those very specific requirements um, the same friend um, at Art Center has lamented that she's had incredibly talented students apply to an animation program that they have that's really famous. Um, but because they failed to include one simple like walk cycle or just like a short animation that they've been disqualified from the admissions process. And that's really quite a shame, right? Um, so I think, um, again, like you're kind of at this point where you're about to embark on this college journey um, and, you know, admissions is, is difficult and it's a lot to add on to being a high school student finishing out your senior year. It's a helpful to be organized and I would say make a list um, of the colleges you want to apply to 
and then kind of break down what you need for each of those. Um, and this is the fun part. Like this is where you can kind of start to like dream up what your future looks like. Um, some questions I, I tell people to ask themselves are what kind of school or place they wanna to go to. Are you looking for a university or a liberal arts college with an art program? Or are you going specifically to an art college or an art institute? They're gonna be really different in their curriculum. One's gonna have more options um, for you know, other majors and kind of expanding beyond um, just the field of art. Some places are gonna be incredibly focused on art and are gonna kind of fast track you through that process. What kind of place do you wanna live in? Um, do you wanna live out in the country and kind of be like, there are art schools that are kind of like almost like on farmland and, and they're very rural and very quiet. Some places I would say like Wash U are, are more suburban. They're in this residential kind of neighborhood like area. Some places are really urban. Like, do you wanna be smack dab in the middle of downtown LA or do you wanna be in Manhattan? Like, is that something that excites you or something that scares you? Important thing to ask yourself because um, it'll affect your, your energy and your outlook when you're at school. Um, do you wanna be really close to home? I feel bad saying this with all the parents here, but do you wanna be close to home or do you wanna be far away? Like, I think this is your opportunity to, to think, you know, um, about where you want to be in, in the world or the United States. Um, you know, do you want to be at Webster or Wash U or something that's like, you know, in the same city? Do you want to go a little further and be in Chicago or Kansas City? Um, and, or do you want to just be like on a coast? Um, and I think there's advantages and disadvantages to wherever you live. Um, I'd also say consider funding opportunities, um, you know, art school and college costs a lot of money. And for a lot of people that involves taking on some student debt. And first of all, ask yourself, is that something you wanna do? Um, and, um, you know, talking to your parents about affordability, um, are there schools that um, will give you full ride scholarships? Like, is that, is that potential? Um, or, you know, are there schools that are gonna be expensive no matter how much scholarship you get. Um, I'd also say like, this is a good chance to consider like community college too, because there are wonderful community colleges in St. Louis that you can go to, um, get two years of, of amazing coursework in, get an associates and then transfer to a different school. That's also an option as well. Um, you don't have to go off to like an elite school, like right off the bat. Um, and I would say something that's really important um, is, student and alumni testimonies. Um, like, do you know anybody who's gone to those schools or can you connect with somebody who has? Because, um, I don't know, it, it's like, truthfully, you know, on the admission side, everybody says like, their campuses are wonderful. Their faculty are amazing. Their, re their facilities are like wonderful. And, you know, everything's great, right? Especially when you're going to a website where school's advertising itself. But really what you wanna know is like the nitty gritty, like, how is the school culture? How's the food? Are the dorms nice? Like stuff that like will really affect you day to day um, that isn't maybe like hugely important in the grand scheme of things, but, but really can have an effect on your quality of life. Um, I think something that was really important to me when I was in high school was what kind of school culture is there? Um, are people kind to each other or are they competitive? Because, you know, I knew like some people really thrive in a sink or swim kind of um, environment and other people collapse. And I, and I knew that I needed like a very supportive environment. So that's something that I was considering when I was looking at schools. Um, so again, these are just like great questions to ask yourself because, and I say that because there's hundreds of art schools in the United States and it can be really, really difficult to even sort where you wanna go. Having a short list is going to make your life so much easier. Um, and I just wanted to share, like, when I was doing my college portfolio, um, I just had, like, a folder on my computer with all of my artwork in it, and then I had a folder for each art school I was applying to, and I would kind of, like, drag and drop um, different pieces um, into each folder, so each portfolio varied slightly um, from each other because CalArts was looking for something different than SAIC, than WashU. Um, and doing this early on made it super easy to just go into slide room and then like 
drag and drop and just upload the work and, and fill things in. Again, the earlier you're kind of organized, um, the better. I highly recommend not trying to start your portfolio or applications like the week before they're due. Um, and I, this is embarrassing, but I can share this now. Like when I was in high school, I like applied to Brown because my dad was like, apply to Brown. Um, and I didn't open the application until the night before. And uh, I saw that there are all these short essays that I had to write. And I had like 20 minutes to write them. So I just like was just keyboard smashing and I didn't get into Brown <laughs> for very obvious reasons. But um, there's nothing worse than like have like kind of preparing for this big application process for this next stage in your life and then like having no time to do it. So just, you know, learn from my mistake. Don't do this the night before. Um, an important part of building a portfolio is also to get feedback. Um, and you have wonderful art teachers um, who will give you feedback and push you. Um, but I would also say it's important to, to get feedback elsewhere. Um, and that's where admissions people come into play. Um, a lot of us will do um, portfolio days, uh, which are these national events where students will actually bring their work, um, like their portfolios to a location or to a school, line up and meet with representatives at a table. Um, and this is a great way to even just like talk face to face with different representatives from schools um, and just to get feedback on your work and to ask specific questions about each program. Um, I know that with COVID, we haven't been able to do these um, events um, in person, but I did want to mention that National Portfolio Days are running online this year, and we do have a couple more spring events coming up. So if you're, and I would say like, even when you're in a, a junior, this is a great time to just kind of get, you know, take the temperature and, and just see maybe if you're on the right track or if there's something you need to pivot and kind of change. Um, I want to share really quickly um one second oops sorry um this is the the interface for national portfolio day this year so we've actually kind of built out this like almost almost like you're at like an actual like space where they do portfolio reviews um there's an exhibit hall where you'll actually see like each um, school has a booth and you can kind of scroll left or right um, or you can like search by school but um, this is a great way to just like talk again talk to a representative get feedback on your work um, each school has a booth and like kind of information um, that you can like put into a virtual backpack so you can like review their brochures later on it's a little bit weird right I think <laughs> trying to translate things virtually um, has been super clunky, but, um, but at the same time, I think this is like a really wonderful resource um, to, to use. Like being able to hear directly from our representatives is like invaluable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my screen, uh, to my presentation. Um, if you're interested in, in maybe attending a National Portfolio Day, this is the website, or you can just Google National Portfolio Day and you can find out which events are happening. Um, again, they're all virtual, so um, they're really easy to kind of drop into. I also just wanted to include this like section of, of I just like asked my friends in admissions, like what advice would you give um, or what not to do in a portfolio? Um, I thought I would just share those with you. The first one that I got was please avoid fan art. Um, and fan art, I would consider to be like uh, drawings of your favorite anime characters or, um, you know, hyper-realistic charcoal drawings of celebrities. You know, not that these aren't like valid forms of art in themselves and not that they're, you can't make them really nice. Um, but I think the idea is that in a portfolio, we want to see original work. So even if you, um, you know, really love an anime or a cartoon, um, try inventing your own character like in that world. Um, try to kind of build from your own experiences rather than just like drawing, you know, something you saw on the internet. Um, so that's a, that's a huge one. The second one is keep the portfolio relevant to the school or program that you're applying to. Um, again, this is just come from complaints from other people where 
you know, somebody will apply to a graphic design program with an illustration portfolio or, um, you know, being from the Sam Fox school, we have, um, we only, we only have three majors, um, studio art, communication design and fashion. So when I see a portfolio that has like transportation design or product design or areas that we don't have, I assume that the student hasn't done their research on what kind of programs we offer and that they're just like sending the same portfolio to a ton of different schools and therefore maybe aren't that interested in actually attending our school. So it's a little bit of a turnoff, right? Um, avoid tourist photos. Um, this is more relevant to like photography, but um, you know, you're on vacation, you take a beautiful picture of like a beach or, um, you know, a building or something in Spain and, you know, it's beautiful, but also think about like how many other people have maybe taken the exact same photo. Like, even though it's like a really beautiful image, again, we want to see you in the work. And I think the more kind of, um, unconventional of a take you can have with photography, the better. Um, so that's why when I see portfolios that have like a beautiful photo of like a flower or like a dog, like they're awesome images, um, but they're not super individual. Um, this is more of a, the next one is avoid extremely long or wide formats. Um, this is more of a format issue when you're sub submitting your work through slide room we're literally just reviewing our portfolios like on our laptop screens. Anything that's like super panoramic or like a comic strip that's like this tall and long just doesn't read super well. Um, so that's just something to like maybe consider is like breaking down the layout in a different way. It just makes everything like really teeny tiny and we can't read anything. Um, Get a portfolio review is was the other piece of advice. Again, each school is looking for something a little bit different from each other. Um, and we love giving feedback to students and seeing that the student has actually listened to us. So with that, I'll note that when you're doing portfolio reviews, take notes. You think you're going to remember what they said to you. And then as soon as it's over, you will forget. So. Uh, I would say like, like if you're doing an in-person event and if you have a parent or a friend with you, like have them write notes about what the conversation is so that you can kind of come back and like assess and do that. Um, again, it's it's just when you're in the conversation, you think you're gonna remember and then you know I always forget stuff later on. Um, and the last piece of advice is attend a portfolio building program. Um, and this is an opportunity that you have as a younger student um, is to look at pre-college programs um, and I'm going to do a shameless plug right now, but um, Wash U or the Sam Fox School has pre-college programs in art and architecture. And the reason we've created these programs is to give students the opportunity to like work on their college portfolios in the summer um, so that you have more work to submit. It's also an amazing way to kind of try out a school. Um, when I was in high school, I did a MICA pre-college program and I like lived on campus for four weeks and took classes with the teachers. And, and it was really cool to like be in an art school environment because that's something I never experienced before. Um, and it made a difference in my life because then I knew, okay, I wanna do art school, this is great. Some people find out that they don't wanna do art school. That is totally fine also. And it's better, I guess, to figure that out earlier rather than later. Um, but I would say pre-college programs are an incredible way um, to, to make community, to create amazing work, and also to be known. And that's kind of an important, something I wanna emphasize is that um, it's great to be like memorable to your admissions representatives, um, keeping up, like emailing them once in a while with an update with your work. Um, showing up to portfolio day, attending a pre-college program. It's like really amazing when I like remember, um, you know, I work with hundreds of students, but there are some people like I'll never forget. And some people I just um, know, or like we chat and almost kind of develop like a friendly relationship. Um, and I think that's a great kind of asset that you can have. Doing a pre-college pro program, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get into the school, but it also in a way gets your foot in the door because again, they're going to remember you. They'll know how you performed in their classes um, and they'll know that you probably have an, a genuine interest in their program. Um, and that's an important thing is, is 
being really authentic and sincere about where you want to go and why. Um, because it is a big turnoff when I talk to students and they're like, I would love to go to the University of Washington. I really want to live in Seattle. And I'm like, I have incredibly bad news for you. <laughs> we are in St. Louis, Missouri. So again, do your research. Um, with that, um, I'm, it's kind of the end of my like presentation slash rant about <laughs> college admissions and portfolio. Um, I'd love to take any questions and I'll go ahead and draw my email into the chat. Um, in case anybody has like further questions, um, I'm happy to answer them, whether they're related to WashU or just to, to admissions in general. But anyway, I'd love to hear it from everybody else. Um, I have uh, more of a comment than a question. Uh, it seems easier now to research the instructors also at the university or college or art institute that you have interested interest in. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's also, uh, you know, equally important that there, you talked a little bit about, you know, the style of work, but that there is someone at the university that is um, working in a certain way that you want to or have interest in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that was, you know, and that's one thing great about the internet and uh, being able to have that, you know, just at the drop of your finger at your fingertips to um, look at their exhibition record or their, um, you know, work record or whatever. And that's, I think that's important too. Totally. And I would also emphasize that um, it's great to look at student work samples from these schools because they're, the schools are going to be really different. Like the New York Academy of Fine Arts is going to have a totally different vibe than Kansas City Art Institute. A lot of um, art programs have put their final BFA shows online this year. And I think it, it's helpful to like even Google and see what are the seniors producing right before they graduate? Is this the kind of work that I want to be making? Um, and if, if it feels good, then, then, you know, then you know that maybe that's a place you want to go. Absolutely. Uh, that was an excellent presentation, Rachel. Thank you. I mean, truly, I think that was very informative. And um, I was more like, I'll write my applications 20 minutes before it was due. <laughs> it's it's no, not a good time. That. It's right. a really bad time. Yeah, so don't do that. Uh, so if there are not any more questions or comments or anything to share, um, I want to thank Rachel again for her hard work and for putting this presentation together this evening, which I think was excellent. So I'm sure if you have questions for her, she would welcome your email uh, and give you her advice. Uh, I want to thank Emerson Electric again for sponsoring Young Artist Showcase and uh, our scholarship that we give of $500 and also the Weinstock family who also sponsors a uh, scholarship. Uh, Franny Weinstock was a longtime member of the St. Louis Artists Guild and her family uh, makes this donation annually in her uh, memory and in her honor. And also want to thank our current members, Joanne Stremstifer and Amy Firestone Rosen, who also uh, contributed to uh, the awards this evening. And then as well as all of those who come before us, and that is uh, uh, many people, this organization is 135 years old. And um, those who are involved in nonprofits or just in anything that's sort of day to day, um, everybody takes turns sort of carrying the ball so that it comes forward. And so here we are. So I will announce the award winners and Zach's going to share a screen and so that we can actually see the work and uh, piece by piece and we don't have to try to go into our virtual gallery. So our first um, 
uh, honorable mention is um, by Alex Fe Felco and Paws of Blue by Paws of Blue by. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. Um, this is an honorable mention of twenty-five dollars and fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous piece. That is fantastic. Our next is by uh, Xavier Silva, and this is untitled and photograph. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Great. Congratulations, and he's from John Burroughs. Thank you, and congratulations. The next piece is by Sahara Asher, honorable mention, $25, The Runaway Girl, also from John Burroughs. And looks like a painting, but I don't know that for sure. It's a photograph. Nice, beautiful piece. Our uh, last honorable mention is by Reagan McDeal, and that is Jermaine by MICDS. $25. The Joanne Stremstifer Prize goes to Alice Kircherope. Light Water Smoke from Parkway Central High School. Wonderful. You guys did great work. You always do great work. These are fabulous. Rachel, I know it was hard. I know it's hard. All right, our next piece, Jim Firestone Award by Ashley Kong. And the award is $50. And Ashley's from Parkway Central High School. Beautiful. Our next award, the William and Elaine Small Award of $100 goes to Morgan Nelson, Nelson Emerged Brentwood High School. Fabulous. The next award, Clay and Eugene Jordan Prize, $100, Adrian Baxter, Parkway South High School. Our next award, the Connie Hume Memorial Award of $100 goes to Emily He, Grandfather and Me, Parkway Central High School. They're definitely not going to give Logan an award. It's not good. Okay. Are we okay? All yeah, right. sorry, I was just like muting people. All right. All right. The right. Cynthia Berg Prize goes to Denise Summers, Candy Soar, Lindbergh High School. And the next, the Nada Silva Best in Show Prize for $300 goes to Chris Weber, Overflow, Parkway North High School. These are wonderful, wonderful pieces. Our next two are our scholarships with students intending to go to college in the art field. The Franny Weinstock Scholarship of $500 goes to Ellen Stemann in Isolation, in Isolation, Lindbergh High School. Congratulations, Ellen. And our last scholarship award from Emerson Electric goes to Zoe Scully. Specimen, John Burroughs School, the Emerson Electric Scholarship. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for joining in this evening. We know you all have worked hard. And if we could give you all an award, we would, because you all deserve it. Absolutely. So bravo. Any any other comments or questions this evening? Could you uh thanks so much? That was beautiful. Could you send out an email with those lists to the winners? Yes. The all the, yes, all the winners will be posted on our website tomorrow morning. And I will also be sending out an email um, to with all the award winners and works as well. Um, so that perfect, way. beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, great work from everybody. Oh, this is great. This is incredible. Yes, fabulous. Also, maybe we we can post Rachel's. We'll just post Rachel's email address on our uh, site too, yeah. so that the world has access to her. Yeah. So. Also, this video will be edited um, and put on our website as well. Excellent. Great. Good. Then everybody will have access to Rachel's PowerPoint. Yes. Yes. All right. I just, All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in this evening. 
Thank you, Rachel, for your hard work. And to all the students and instructors, thank you for your hard work. And may we all get together in person next year. Thanks for having me. Thank all you, right. everybody. Thank all you right. very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you so all much. Right. Thank you.